Welcome. I'm Eldon Dedershek. I will be your host tonight, and I will be reviewing the 1955 sci-fi classic, It Came From Beneath the Sea. This film was, of course, released in July 1955, directed by Robert Gordon, also produced by a familiar name to anyone else uh, who may be really into sci-fi films, classic sci-fi films, of course, uh, Charles H. Shear, who produced uh, such stellar hits as Earth vs. the Flying Saucer, um, 20 Million Miles to Earth, uh, also one of my personal favorites, Clash of the Titans. The story begins upon the world's first atom-powered submarine. The crew encounters, well, the crew is attacked, actually, by some massive creature. They, and they keep the reveal of this creature pretty mysterious in the beginning of the film. Uh, the crew themselves comment that it, it could be another submarine, but it's too big, or a whale, of course, too big for a whale as well. Um, it isn't until they're able to break free from the attack, that they send a few divers out to investigate, they discover that during this attack, a, a large chunk of some mysterious flesh was lodged in, uh, I believe, the rotor of the submarine. So, of course, they bring, uh, they bring this, this massive sample of flesh in to be investigated, and this introduces us to two of the main science characters. Uh, there's a woman scientist named Leslie Joyce, who is played by Faith Domergue. Uh The male scientist named, oddly enough, John Carter. Of, of all the names in a sci-fi movie, John Carter. Interesting, right? Well, he was actually played by Donald Curtis. So it's these two scientists who actually discover that the, the mass of flesh comes from a giant radioactive octopus. Now, at first, the two scientists aren't believed. I'm not sure if this was a sexist thing, as it was the woman scientist, Leslie Joyce, who goes ahead and reveals this to the, the military. How could she possibly be correct that a massive radioactive octopus attacked one of their submarines? Uh, of course, maybe I'm reading it wrong. I don't know if uh, maybe just the time it was filmed in or maybe they just didn't present enough evidence. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I guess the audience will have to be the judge on that. Um, however, I will say whether or not uh, the, the military not believing Leslie Joyce uh, was kind of a sexist move, uh, she actually comes off as quite a modernized, uh, you know, women are just as awesome as men type of woman, which I think is fantastic for a film that was made back in the 1950s, so I will give uh, the film credit for that, even though, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the fact that the military didn't believe them, uh, you know, the two scientists, seems a little sexist just because the woman presented the evidence. That's all I'll say about it. At this point, there are two more attacks, and the military uh, begins to believe the, the scientist, Leslie Joyce. There is an attack on a trans steamer heading uh, from Vancouver, Canada to Honolulu. So, of course, they're attacking the Pacific Ocean. Now, interestingly enough, when the crew from that trans steamer is rescued, and they do get rescued, miraculously, nobody believes that a giant octopus saves them, even though they were already warned by the scientist. I found that really weird. I found that, like, I, I don't know why that stuck with me, but it's just the weirdest thing. Like, like you have a scientist presenting you scientific evidence, and you're like, nah, that can't be. And then you have witnesses, actual witnesses, who were there, who saw a giant octopus attack their ship, and you're still like, no, it's not a giant octopus. You guys are crazy, right? You guys are, you're on the drugs. Now, the second attack was on the coast of Oregon. And 
the telltale signs that it was a giant octopus that they give us are these huge, these massive suction cup imprints left in the sand. It's really hard for me to say that with a straight face, but that is exactly what happened. Not only were there these giant imprints left in the sand, but the people investigating on the beach were attacked. And I just want to say right now, the special effects, the, 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 the masterful way that Ray Har Harryhausen brought this creature to life is just, I, it's just fantastic. It definitely holds up to the test of time. I think every scene with a giant octopus, the giant octopus pretty much steals the scene. Uh, he, he's amazing. Um, I'd like to go have drinks with him, but he's too big to fit in the bar, so, you know. And he's not real. Bummer, you know. So this leads up to the actual attack, the, the grand finale of the film, where I, it's just, it's amazing. It's so amazing that they were able to get a giant radioactive mutant octopus to actually attack the city of San Francisco and all its citizens. And, and if that weren't enough, if, if, if a giant radioactive octopus attacking San Francisco wasn't enough, they have military men with flamethrowers attacking the giant tentacles and i gotta say it's just it's absolutely wonderful i just loved every minute of that of that scene of the of, of the attack on 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 san francisco the city of san francisco then of course uh he wraps his tentacles around the golden gate bridge later starts tearing that down that's pretty cool i i always like to put a little trivia into these reviews if i can the, the octopus uh, doesn't actually have eight tentacles, right? So it, it is a it is a sixth a six legged octopus or a sexopus, I guess, if uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, sextopus, sexopus. I don't, I don't know. So now we're reaching the end of the review, and I always like to keep these things spoiler free, so I'm not going to tell you whether or not they defeat the creature from, uh, well, I'll tell you, it's actually from the Mariana Trench, the radioactive Mariana Trench octopus. And I won't tell you if they do, how they do it. You really need to go see this wonderful masterpiece for yourself. And I do have a link in the description below. So you can get the original black and white version of this movie. If you'd rather go for the color, I will also have a link for that one. Now, I have to say, I have, you, you've seen the colorized version behind me because I could not find uh, a decent enough copy of the black and white. Now, I'm a purist, and I would have loved to have uh, showed the black and white the way it was originally filmed. I would love to show that to you. I just was not able to. Um, both links are there. Pick and choose. The color version is great. I feel like you really need to see it in black and white, the way it was originally filmed. Um, no, I, you know, personally, I don't have anything against colorization. I think you did a fantastic job here. I don't think you can tell by looking at that that this was colorized. I just feel, just from my own purist perspective, that the only way to watch this film is as it was originally filmed. Um, and that's so. As, as far as the final word. I don't have much to say. I don't really do stars or whatever, but if this film is highly recommended. And if you would rather me do stars in the future, please let me know in the comments. I'll do stars. But I feel like if I'm going to do stars, I have to go point by point. Like, I would have to be like, the story is great, or the story is poor. The acting was great, or the acting was poor. Based on all that, here are the stars I would give it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the review. I really hope that if you choose to see it, you really enjoy the movie. Um, I think, I mean, this is this is one of the movies that you just, you just if you're a fan of science fiction, but not just science fiction, monster movies in general, this has to be on your to watch list at some point. Like it, like it's it seems to me to be required. Anyway, have a very good evening. Thank you so much for watching.